Genesis chapter 39, Genesis chapter 39, starting with the first verse, starting with the verse, verse, we're going to actually read the entire chapter, it's 23 verses, but we're going to read it, at least for this chapter, at least at this service, um, I want to remind you for change for children on your way out to make sure that you grab hold of some change and put it in for the children so they can continue to raise their money for scholarship change for children. And also after service, we invite you downstairs to uh, celebrate Lady Maxwell, have a little bit of uh, food and fellowship together, celebrating her birthday. Amen. 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 Just come downstairs after service, take a little while to hug on her and love on her, go outside into our um, rally day celebration for small groups. Amen. Genesis chapter 39, continuing our Give Me a Break series uh, Joseph life chapter 37 through 50 but today we're going to look at chapter 39 if you have it in your Bibles Genesis 39 say amen, amen. Uh, let's read it together I'm going to read it you just listen uh, the Bible says in verse 1 and Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar an officer of Pharaoh captain of the guard an Egyptian brought him on the hands of the Ishmaelites which which had brought him down thither and the Lord was with Joseph. Come on, let's say that together. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was pros a prosperous man. And he was in the house of the master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put into his hands. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Mm, my God. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he knew uh, not aught he had save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me, baby, baby. Lie with me. Verse 8, but he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master, what if not what is with me in the house? And he hath committed all that he have to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither have he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within and she caught him by his garment, by his coat, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them saying, see he had brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried rape. I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me that his wrath has kindled. And Joseph's master took him, put him into the prisons, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was 
the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. The word of God for the people of God, blessed be the name of our God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Last week we started this series, Give Me a Break, and we talked about main break how to cope with not fitting in and today I want to talk about break fast like breakfast but two words break fast how to flee from temptation break fast how to flee from temptation pray with me and stay with me God release your prophetic word this morning that stirs your people to action and pushes them to their destiny Compel them, O oh dear master, to shake up the doldrums of religiosity and perfunctory and move them to the assigned place in their lives. God, we pray for an outrageous outpouring of your anointing that incites and put in, incites passion for ministry and not mess for kingdom and not craziness for divine purpose versus peddling of demonic works that only has street value but no Christ-centered credibility. God, we want your presence and your power. Release it right now. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. This, this message is not for the faint of heart or uh, the faint-hearted is not for imitators or spectators, but it's for transformers, waymakers, and change angels who have been changed by the power of his blood and by his spirit. Do I have a witness? Because one cannot read the story and the journey of Joseph housed in Genesis 37 through Genesis 50 and remain the same, especially those of us who have been darkened by the equatorial sun and have the sound of the drum in our heart and the, uh, the dancing of God in our feet. Joseph's story unfolds in the Old Testament but provides us New Testament revelation uh, or, inter, or intratestinal insight that paints a portrait in the old but is in real time in the new. Mm -hmm. The Jacob Joseph father son relationship in the old bears witness to the God the father Jesus connection in the new. Mm -hmm. Jesus earthly father is named Joseph not by accident but by providence. Old Testament Joseph is a typology of Jesus and Jacob in the Old Testament is a typology of the father who was well pleased with his son in the new. I feel like preaching today y'all. Jacob the patriarch gives his son a coat of many colors or a multiplicity of material sewn together in the Old Testament. And the Father God takes uh, and forms Jesus' humanity to hold his divinity through many types of people uh, and cultures from the human landscape, giving him a human coat of diversity who blood creates a multicultural tapestry in Jesus. Oh Lord, you ain't hearing me yet. Because Jesus who would die and shed his blood for the whole world because he also had the whole world in his blood. Huh, I got past that. I wanted to drop that revelation quick. Last week, we unpacked chapter 37 and provided you a word called main break, how to cope with not fitting in. In it, it showed you the level of hatred Joseph brothers had toward him that was growing each day mm -hmm. uh, in verse 12 through 28 you recall of chapter 37 it related to the course of events that resulted in Joseph being carried down to Egypt um, these verses highlighted highlighted the perversity or evil of the brothers alone one detail in particular shows the brothers to be especially callous and wicked. 
Mm -hmm. And the Bible lets us know immediately after tossing uh, Joseph in the pit, which specifically is described having no water in verse 24 of chapter 37, such that Joseph will not drown, but will not be able to have not even a drink. The brothers immediately sat down and enjoyed their lunch in verse 25. How do you put your brother in a pit uh, to, to be thirsty for the rest of his life and sit down and eat lunch? The juxtaposition of these two actions is reminiscent to the time of Esther in Esther 3.15. Right after the edicts have been issued to the destruction of the Jews, the Bible says the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Susa was thrown in confusion. Uh, you, you're not hearing me, see, because it's, it's interesting that we, when wickedness is being released and evil people are doing their deeds, they so cool about it, they can sit down and eat. Mm -hmm. uh, they show neither no compassion or no remorse. And so in keeping with the narrative art of the story, verse 19 and 20 of chapter 37 poignantly foreshadows the ending of the Joseph cycle that I told you about last week. They said, uh, here comes the dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of those pits that we shall see uh, that the raw animal has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. If you didn't get anything out of last week's word, you should have begun to understand who you are and who we are in God and the enemy we are fighting. Uh, I want you to know this morning that our enemy is relentless, brutal, focused, and ferocious, and he wants to take you out, not when you're full grown and spiritually mature, uh, not when you're prepared and armed, but this enemy hatched a plan to sift you, attack you, oppress you, destroy you, kill you. Listen here. And he wanted to kill all of us in this room in our infancy, childhood, or teens so we would not mature in the things of God where you would realize your full gifting and your full anointing. Anybody know you had a hit on your life since you've been a child? Mm -hmm. Joseph brothers heard the dream, saw the coat, and saw the power and the charisma of, on Joseph's life. Not only did they have different mamas, but they could see favor and fair, and the enemy was using them to kill the dream and the future. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, uh, but, but you have been through so much in your childhood. Uh, you, you have been through so much hell and back in your teens, and everyone gave up hope in you, even after the abuse and the misuse and the disapproval. They thought you wasn't going to be uh, anything, but look at you now. Mm -mm. <sighs> the, the enemy... Uh, the enemy, this Joseph story lets us know that the enemy was trying to use uh, as a tool to destroy uh, Joseph and put him in pits, prisons, and places of destruction and disruption so he can wipe out Joseph, but also to wipe you out and to wipe your dreams uh, off the planet. Can I back up and slow it up a little bit? Because I want you to know the enemy will use any tool, even your family. Lord, have mercy. To put you in pits, prisons, and places of destruction and disruption to make sure he wipe out your dreams off the planet. But God. Anybody got a but God praise? That? But God stepped in. But God blessed me. But God put favor on me. But, but God helped me. But God. Uh, God turned what was meant for evil for your good. God used those hard places. Listen here. It hasn't been easy in your life, but God has and continues to use those hard places to speak to you and to put his word in you and to thicken your skin and help you to become who you are. I don't know about you, but I can testify. It was in those pits and prisons. Uh, I made promises to God uh, that I would serve him until I die. And sometimes God got to get you between a rock and a hard place to make you promise to him. God, if you get me out of this one thing and you give me one more chance to get it right, I promise to you, I'm not going to mess over you no more. I'm going to do right. I'm going to come correct. If you give me another chance to, to be who you want me to be, God. 
anybody ever said that? I, I know I said that. God, if you can get me out of this hell, if you can get me out of this mess, I promise you, I'm going to do things right. I, I'm not going to get it twisted any, anymore. Lord, have mercy. You see, uh, you understand this. Understand you. You and I had no idea that the enemy was trying to snuff you out before you come to fulfillment of your anointing. Before you get the whole revelation of Jesus Christ. Before you become sold, a sold out disciple of Jesus. Before you know about spiritual warfare. Before you can see uh, and release healing with your hands. Before you can rightly divide the word for yourself. Before you can speak with authority over your wife, your children, your man, your, your family. The enemy was trying to kill you before you come into your gifting. Uh -huh. I, I, I feel like I'm touching somebody right now. You see, he, you, you didn't realize uh, you've been going from hell and back and battling from hell and back, but the enemy was trying to kill you. He didn't want you to come into your gifting, your revelation, or your power. You thought your battle was with, your, with other drug dealers. You thought your battle was with popo. -po. You thought your battle was with the hood and over turf or, or gangs over power. You thought the enemy was fighting you over where you were uh, in the now, but that really he was fighting to kill you so you would not get to where you're going and who you would become. I want you to know that the enemy is more scared about who you're going to become than anything you can ever imagine. Who you're going to become got the enemy nervous. Who you're going to make, who you're going to become has got the enemy shook. And if he can stop you from becoming the, the man and woman of God anointed uh, in him, uh, he will do anything to stop you. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to tell you, though, through the Joseph pericope, the Joseph paradigm, that enemy was always scared of who you would become and saw what you were becoming and wanted to kill you and destroy you. Listen, while the vision was still in a micro or macro level that he could manage. Mm -hmm. You see, the enemy understands and knows if you and I rise up and you uh, just say with me, God ain't finished with me yet. Because if you and me can rise up uh, beyond the distorted, disordered, despicable pits and prisons and lock into our kingdom destiny and design and determination that is so impactful and transformational to our families and everybody connected to us, he, the enemy, will not be able to stop you at all. And he's worried about you. But don't miss it. The enemy will use again your family as the instrument of your destruction, pain, brokenness, emotional fragmentation, mental anguish, physical abuse, spiritual desperation, financial oppression, and social awkwardness. Are you not glad that no weapon formed against you will prosper? You see, we, we, we quote that all the time, but it doesn't say it will not be formed, shaped, or activated. Because when, when you look at the text uh, of being the formation of no weapon in the Greek, it means formed, shaped, and activated, and released against you. He says no weapon will be formed, activated, or, or, or released against you. It doesn't mean it won't, it won't happen, but it won't prosper. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Huh, huh. Lord, help me with that right there. Joseph's story lets us know the difference between where I am and where I need to go is the bridge that had been built from a deep relationship and through faith. Okay, let me, let me attack this thing because I want to get to how to flee from temptation. I'm going to jump past some of this thing right here. Joseph's brothers put him in a pit. And the Midianites merchants took Joseph out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and they brought Joseph to Egypt. It is there where Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, the Lord, uh, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. But the captain of the guard purchased Joseph. And he purchased Joseph, but the Lord was with him. And Joseph was a prosperous man. And Potiphar saw it on him and made him overseer of the house and all that was in it. You see, when you're covered, when you're anointed, you, you can't stop it. You, 
Uh, people can't stop you. It's just on you. It's just, it's just in you. It's just all around you, and people will see it. And so, and God blessed that house and field because Joseph was there, and God will bless wherever you at, wherever you working. Uh, God will bless you because you are there uh, when you're really operating in his spirit and doing the things of God and you yield it to him. He'll bless you in the field. He'll bless you in the city. Everywhere your feet will go, he will bless you. Blessings don't mean that you won't be challenged and you won't be attacked. Lord, have mercy. Potiphar wife saw how fine and chiseled my jizzled Joseph was. Yeah, she saw that Negro and said, Dang, go on there, Lord. And she didn't, she didn't cut no corners. She was blunt. She said, lie with me. Let me give you some. Come on, come on. This is the, the, rated, the rated PG version. But the Bible says Joseph refused and it highlighted the trust his master put in him. And how can I do this great wickedness and sin, he said, against God. But day after day, she wouldn't stop. She kept coming after that brother. And then she caught him, snatched him by his jacket. He was trying to just pass by uh, the bedroom area. And she tried to grab and pull him into the bedroom. She, she snatched him. The Bible uh, and the Hebrew talks about grabbing him with power and thrust. Uh, she snatched, my God. She snatched that young tenderoni. She snatched, uh, call him Tyrone. She snatched that young brother uh, and, and tried to bring him into her bedroom and demanded he lay with her. The Bible says Joseph ran out of there quickly. He he ran so fast he came out of his coat brothers I'm trying to help you in here brother uh, you got to run out fast uh, he, he, he ran out uh, and he ran out quickly and fled leaving his coat and she cried rape mm -hmm. everybody is not guilty brothers and sisters but some are and his master had put him in prison so I believe today, and I want you to take a few notes, Joseph life stories teaches us how to flee from temptation. You see it in the text and in chapter 37. I want to give you three points and I'm going to sit on down. Uh, how to flee from temptation. Number one, number one, you have to see in order to flee. I'm going to feel like a rapper today. You have to see in order to flee. See, verse 18 of chapter 37 and verse 7 of chapter 39, 39 both inform us that, that people were observing and plotting against Joseph. I want to let you know people are watching you. You don't realize how many people are watching you. And they saw something on him and hatched a plan against him. Uh, my bishop, Bishop Jakes, called it a contrived conspiracy against Joseph. Um, verse 18 in chapter 37 says, and when they saw him afar off, they saw him, even before he came near unto them, they what? Conspired against him to slay him. Verse 7 of chapter 39 says, and it came to pass after these things that the master's wife cast her eyes, there it is y'all, upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. The brothers saw and the Potiphar wife saw with their eyes and saw what? that Joseph had on him. Not only did he have a coat of many colors, but he had, he had a covering from God on his life with favor and grace, and the hand of God was upon him. And those who were in authority, Jacob, Daddy, uh, and Potiphar, saw and blessed him, uh, giving him honor and authority, which Joseph's enemies saw, then conspired and hatched their plan. I don't know who's under oppression and duress and you've been trying to figure out why they don't like you why they keep bothering you but they see something in you because greater is he that is in me than he is in the world and sometimes it ain't really you but it's he that dwells in the secret places of the most high in you and so I, I want you to know in order to flee you have to see the conspiracy stop like you don't have an enemy you must see the conspiracy somebody say conspiracy the enemy does not use strange bedfellows he uses folk right up in your face 
folk right in up in your family folk right in the same house with you seeking to sift you to attack you to hurt you sometimes you're sleeping with the enemy preach pastor maxwell uh, what are you trying to say, Pastor Max? You don't need an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor, to see, uh, to give you the necessary spectacles or glasses to see with clarity that you are in the midst of spiritual warfare. And sometimes the enemy sends you exactly what you've been wanting. And you think it looks so good and it's the right brother or sister, man and woman of God. Uh, but it really is a trap that the enemy set because he don't want you to worship him. He don't want you to do his will. He don't want you to work for him. He wants to distract you and destroy you. Uh, so be careful who you connect your life to because somebody is trying to sift you. I, 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 I see my brother back there, Brother Paul, uh, and other brothers who call me uh, in the middle. I was telling the brothers yesterday, call me when it's happening. Don't call me after the fact. And, and Brother Paul and many brothers call, brothers who do construction, and they go up to the house. And one of my brothers who worked for my company years ago, uh, he called me. He had to go in the company, in the house, uh, and fix the wall and the upstairs and the attic and build a new place for the baby that was coming. And he was up there working. Uh, and the woman of God who was unmarried uh, for 20 years was downstairs and she, she came upstairs and, and tried to offer him lunch and water. Then she came back again and offered him all kinds of, of sweets and treats. And she came back again to serve him some more stuff. But this time she didn't have no clothes on. <laughs> Preach, Pastor Maxwell. Come on, don't act like you're innocent. Men do it and women do it too. And some people in the church do it as well. Uh, and that brother got on the phone and said, Mr. Maxwell, I was the president of the company. I got a problem here. I got somebody downstairs butt naked uh, uh, and when I'm trying to work my way out. And by the way, she is fine as wine, but I need somebody to come here and help me. I dispatched one of the angels and trucks of my company to go back over there and knock on the door. And when they knocked on the door, she would change her clothes and walked in and pray, open up the door and looked so good. Uh, he came running up out of there. I said, no, well, you can keep all that we have done, but we're not coming back to this place. What I'm trying to tell you, don't wait till the battle's over. Shout in the midst of the battle. Call for help in the midst of the battle. There's a conspiracy to try to destroy you to try to wreck your marriage wreck your home wreck your oh my god wreck your anointing wreck your oh god your ministry god you, and listen can i just interject and say parenthetically be careful even in the church uh, i say something to my minister of music and some of those who are new here there are people because you're anointed who will try to take you out and eat with you and do things with you and test whether the anointing is on your life here's a little vodka here's a little rum uh, here's a little sister let's go to hooters let's play some games but you got to let them know i got boundaries baby i'm not gonna do that i don't belong to myself there's a conspiracy there's somebody who wants to destroy you don't let the brothers who are too immature destroy your anointing don't let the women who don't know who god is to sift you we got lord there's a conspiracy and god don't like ugly and you got to understand god don't like ugly and you gotta be careful because the enemy can use any christian pastor or people to sift and destroy you and you gotta be careful when you don't have humility you're already set up for a fall I i'll leave it alone I i'm getting a download and i'm trying to be careful because i gotta get up out of here you may have to escort me out before i'm finished the enemy wants to destroy you Mm -hmm. The more you elevate your game in the spirit, the more he wants to eliminate your blessings. The more God promotes you, the more he wants to demote and destroy you. For each level you go up, there's a new devil waiting for you. This is a conspiracy has been at work all your life trying to stop you from getting to where God had designed you to be. And check it out. These attacks that you've been going to are not of a wild demon born to death with life and had nothing to do. This is a legion of 
organized regimented demonic influences that are set out to destroy you Joseph kept going from problem to problem each demon had a different function in his life and how do I know because all your life you've been saying if it ain't one thing it's another do I got any if it ain't one thing it's another if it ain't one problem it's another that's because they are strategically assigned to the different places of your life, to the different seasons of your life, to the different geographical uh, locations of your life, for the different opportunities. There is demon spirits who are waiting for you to try to sift you, but you got to know a greater is he in me. I can walk on serpent's head. I'm not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power unto salvation to everyone. Believe you got to walk anyway. Be not fair careful uh, but be faithful don't be scared be anointed don't compromise but you gotta fight the good fight you will be tested and listen and you will be tempted it's summertime y'all I gotta walk around like this I get up the train in downtown DC I go where, where I gotta go it's summertime. Men and women dress down so much. Temptation. 24 hours a day. The temptation ain't going nowhere. But you better get your inside out together. Get your mind made up. And know that you ain't going to just play with God. Uh, you got to be like Joseph. I refuse to disappoint God. I refuse to disappoint God. I broke Sherry Maxwell's heart in our time of marriage. I've done some things wrong. But when God grew me up, I finally understand that it was never worth ever time messing up my marriage, destroying the anointing of my children, destroying the church, destroying the ministry. The enemy did not stop coming after me. He ain't going to stop now. That's the reason why I keep my queen right up under my arm preach pastor maxwell you may be mad about it you may be mad but listen i'm not only god in the ministry i'm god in my heart mind and spirit i'm guarding my babies my children i'm guarding this church and she needs to be right here with me there is a conspiracy to destroy you out there there's a conspiracy. Mm -hmm, okay. Y'all, 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 y'all got a little more time. There's a conspiracy. I, I don't know what I need to do to convince you. You're much more than you think you are. You are much greater than you can ever imagine. You are on the enemy's mind because of your gifts and your anointing. You sitting around depressed and not liking yourself. You know why? Because there's a demon of depression trying to destroy you. The enemy is scared of you. He got you fighting your spouse. Got you fighting everybody. Put the fight down and fight the real enemy. The one who's designed to destroy you. Mm -hmm. oh, I got to rest. I'm so fired up I can't even keep this to myself. I said to you there is a conspiracy. That's why they attack you and you did nothing wrong. That's why they hate you and don't know why. That's why they whisper about you and make things up and manipulate truth and attack tax for doing good. They never attack anything you don't care about because there is a conspiracy. They attack you in the place you care most about. They attack your integrity, your character, your name, your reputation, your Christian witness, and they will even attack your family. But I'm trying to tell you, be still and know that he's God. The Lord will fight your battles. The Lord will keep you. Anybody know him as a keeper today? He'll keep you in perfect peace. He'll keep you despite what you've been through. He'll keep you. Hey. Oh, he'll keep you. But you got to understand, it will not stop. Come on, let's say that together. It will not stop until we get on to the other side. As long as we are in these earthly tabernacles, it will not stop. They attack you in the place you care most about. 
and it keeps coming at you and it is, listen here, non-stop. One second it's your car, the next minute it's your house, then it's your refrigerator break, then it's your AC breaking on the hottest day, then it's your child acting up, then it's your neighbor losing their mind, then it's your, you can't even check your account because there's no money in your account. They canceled all your credit cards and you don't know why. Your marriage, your life, your boo acting crazy, your date's gone, gone wild, you don't know why, but I want you to say if one more thing happened this week, I'm going to lose my mind. Don't say that! Stop saying that. You give the enemy power. If one more thing happened to me, I'm going to lose your mind. He's going to let at least one more thing happen. Because he wants you to lose your mind. Stop speaking that thing. Yes, it's happening. But why it's happening, you say, I, I, you got to learn how to sing a song. Uh, why the craziness is going on. That's why I'm glad we have a man of God who's bringing new music to the church so you can have new music to sing. Uh, when the hell breaks out, I want you to grab a song and begin to sing that song. Uh, ain't no stopping me. Sing a song. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It's a conspiracy. There's too much favor on your life. Blessing you is following you days, all the days of your life. Anybody got a, a blessing? You don't even know why you got it, uh, but it keeps coming after you. Everything you touch, God blesses. Uh, you couldn't think you can get the job. You didn't qualify. God gave you the job anyway. And the enemy can't handle the favor on Joseph's life, and the enemy can't handle the favor on your life. Some of you know you've done some things you should have died three times for. But favor ain't fair. You've been with some people and done some things and got away, but you're still here. Favor ain't fair. You even got caught and put in prison. You thought you was in prison for the crime you did, but God was preserving your life and your gift uh, until you get mature enough to handle it while honoring your mama's and grandmama's prayers for you. Anybody know you've been living on grandmama's prayers and mama's prayers? Mama prayed for you had you on your mind took the time to pray for you i know my grandmother prayed me out of jail my grandmother prayed me out of some places my grandmother prayed me out of some people's bed my grandmother prayed thank you grandmama favor it just ain't fair Woo, can I give you number two? Number two, number two. I, I, I gotta leave, I gotta go. I'm ready to preach y'all out to church and walk down the street. Woo. Not only do you have to see in order to flee, here it is now, get ready, write it down. You have to be in order to flee. Write that with a B, capital B and an E. Not only you have to see hmm, in order to flee. You have to be in order to flee. Listen, listen. You have decided who you will serve. You have to decide. If you haven't decided before, you better decide, decide today. You better make up your mind. Because the reason why is that the enemy is taking us out. Have you watched what happened to Prince? That wasn't the first time he used the drug to try to take the pain from the hip surgery he had. But the enemy is trying to take us out. He will use the very prescription drugs that's supposed to be helping us to kill us. Oh, I don't have time to preach that. I'm going to preach that, that, that purple rain sermon sooner or later. You have to decide who you will serve, who you will obey, who you will follow, who, listen, you will honor with your life. The temptations are not going anywhere. Therefore, we must be changed from the inside out in order not to compromise and get ensnared into the enemy's booby traps. You must make up your mind that you will be a Christian in your heart. One of the old songs, uh, maybe you'll sing that afterwards. You have to be able to say you can have my coat, baby, but you can't have my heart. Take the coat. See, Joseph is, is in, in the midst of her grabbing him. He kind of winds up out of that coat. Okay, can you, you see the move? You see the move? He, he, he grabs the coat. He winds up out of that coat. And he run, goes into a, a running position. Yeah, yeah. You see, Joseph already had a coat of many colors. 
His father honored him with a coat of many colors. And I don't have enough time to break that whole coat of many colors because it's not about dye in the, in the, the, the thread. It's about men, many different materials uh, 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 sewn together uh, that represents honor and glory. Uh, and, and, and so, so he, he doesn't mind leaving his coat because he already had the best. Lord, have mercy. Uh, that, that's why I want to preach that to somebody in here. You, 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 you don't realize you already got the best, but you, you're trying to get another coat. You, you already have a covering, but you're trying to find another one. You, 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 you don't realize in the spirit realm, you, you already covered, but you're trying to find a substitute. Uh, and you're messing up your life. Uh, God has already prepared a coat for you to wear, a garment for your life. But you're trying to find a substitute and God's trying to help you to understand. He's already provided everything you need. And you don't need no substitute. You don't need to play no games. Just walk in the covering of God. Uh, the blood of Jesus covers your life 24 hours a day. And you ought to be appreciative that that covering will never fail. The blood works 24 hours a day. And so you have to, you have this covering girl. You can have the covering baby girl. You, you fine. Yes, yeah, you, you chisel in the whistle, but you can have me. You can, but you can't have my heart. You can have this coat, but you can't have my covering. You can have this coat, but you can't have my anointing. You can have this coat, but you can't have, listen here, my body. It belongs to God and Sherry Maxwell. Uh, look at Joseph. Throw truth. Listen, that's another thing you need to do. Throw truth at sin. In verse 8, in verse 9 of chapter 9, the Bible says, But he refused and said unto his master's wife, the NIV I think reads better, With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. Lord, have mercy. Everybody say position. He knows his position. He says, my master has withheld nothing from me except you, talking to the woman. Because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against him and sin against God? I, I, I want to help you. Write this down. Joseph was operating in his legal authority. Oh, I can't. I, I got to let you go. I know. Joseph has been operating in his legal authority. I, I, I live close to Glen Arden, up straight up East Capitol, turns into Central Avenue. You go straight on down there. And Glen Arden's like right in the back. I, I live right here, right by Glen Arden. It's a blessing. I can go to free, <clears throat> free concerts, see my friend John Jenkins and Gloria Miller and all the other friends I have there, Stephen Hurd. I can go back there and, and they bless me and I hang out with them. But it's also a problem because there's 12 to 15,000 people coming to worship every Sunday. They average about 300 people getting saved every Sunday. And so there's so many people I can barely ever get to my house. I live close to them. <clears throat> and so they require a PG police group come out and direct and control traffic to help us residents to get in and out. When a policeman stands and directs traffic over there, as they put up their hand, the, the car can be a half ton or one ton or even a two ton truck. But the policeman puts his hand up and the car stops. Mm -hmm. He directs traffic. He puts up his hands, the car stops, but the car does not stop because of the policeman's power. They stop because the policeman's legal authority. Mm -hmm. That blue uniform makes him kind of like a superman or superwoman. Uh, he or she can put up their hands and physically, they can't physically stop a line of cars from running them over. But when they put out their hands, cars stop because the blue uniform with the badge gives them legal authority. Mm -hmm. That legal authority does what personal power can't do. He does not have the power to stop traffic, but he has the authority to stop traffic. The officer is backed up by the department that he works in, backed up by the Department of Justice of the United States, backed up by the Attorney General, backed up by all the heads of the state, and backed up even by the president. Uh, he have legal authority, and I want you to know you have legal authority in this earthly realm through the power and the shed blood of Jesus in his name. Satan has power. He appears to be bigger and stronger, but as believers, we have legal authority from heavenly places that is more potent than the power of Satan. And sometimes you just need to say, I go, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Back the hell up. Get up out 
of my face. You can't have this. You can't get away from me. And some of you are too nice with the devil. You start talking and having tea with them, crossing your legs, looking all pretty, trying to have a conversation. That's what Eve did uh, in the Garden of Eden. If Eve would have just said, get out, get out of here, uh, I already been told a word. But no, you sitting there having tea and crumpets, trying to have a daggone coffee. Uh, what do they call that? Vanilla latte. And trying to sit there, eat some cookies, and talk with the devil. You got to say, no, I'm not going with you nowhere. I see something on you that don't agree with the Holy Spirit in me. And I'm not staying here and allowing you to, to push me around. Come on, come on, come on. You have authority given to you from the Father and from Potiphar. Sometimes you have to just be who you are in God without compromising who you are. Finally, I got to let you go. You, are, you have to understand the decree in order to flee. You must understand the decree in order to flee. See, Joseph has a decree. When his father gave him that coat of many colors, which was a reflection of his dream, it was multicolors because Joseph would be multicultural. Mm -hmm. Joseph would, uh, he, he would marry an Egyptian woman, although he's Hebrew. Uh, his two sons later on would be part of the starting of the black race. So we can get into that another day. I told you this once before. But he would be going from Hebrew to Canaan for, to Egypt. He would be multicultural. He would deal with people with multiple languages. He would be multidimensional. Uh, he had already a decree on his life when his daddy uh, gave him that coat. There was an assignment and destiny that had been declared and decreed over his life. And so part of his wife, in verse 11, catches Joseph while in the house to do business while everyone was gone and wanted him to lie with him and Joseph fled leaving his coat in her hand she called the gods and said the Hebrew unto us mock us and he she cried rape with a loud voice and when he heard me uh, she said he left the garment of coat she held it to her husband came home she held that coat she probably was smelling it and uh, listening to the perfume and Drakkar probably was smelling right on there I don't know what uh, she was holding that coat I don't know why would you hold it all that time but she wanted to have the evidence when her husband came home I don't know about you but I would have not held that for my wife to give her no evidence because I didn't want no mess in my house I would have burnt the coat. But the woman wanted to, she wanted to, and if you really understand the story, I don't have a, uh, enough time to tell you, but I'll just say this. Uh, he was a captain of the guard, uh, and, and when you really study the background of the captain of the guard, he was an executioner. He was, uh, uh, knew how to kill people in many different ways. But if you watch the story, an uh, executioner does not kill Joseph for trying to hit his wife. He puts him in prison. Which translates, he didn't really believe his wife. But he had to guard his reputation and do, at least do something. Mm -hmm. And see, so he, he put him in prison knowing that he was an executioner, at least so he won't be mocked uh, with the men that he's under him. He had to do something, but he didn't really believe her. See, that was her problem. Uh, uh, she's been there all by his side, but this Hebrew man comes in and gets favor over everything in the house but her. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why that's where people got problems. Are. People got problems. They even got problems when a pastor is working uh, with one person or two person or even ministers uh, that you think I'm pouring more into one than the other. They get problematic about that because they don't understand what the pastor sees and what God says to the pastor about individual ministers and deacons and others who tell them. God tells the man of God or the woman of God what must be done. You see, you see the person in the now, but God shows me them in the future. Yeah, yeah. God, God shows me who they are and what specific assignment that's on their life and to work in the very place of the assignment to develop them in that place. Not because they're favored over you, it's because they have a different assignment than you. And you got to be able to appreciate what God is doing versus judging people by based on time that the pastor is investing in them. Preach, Pastor Maxwell, uh, because I'm trying to help you. Uh, your assignment is different from somebody else's assignment. Uh, I pour into you what God tells me to pour into you. But what's for you is for you. Stop worrying about everybody else's business. Stop worrying about what the pastor is trying to do. I'm trying to listen and yield to God and be obedient to him because I don't want to disappoint God and I don't want to break my word to him. So I got to do what he tells me to do, not what you tell me to do. So don't be mad when I say, see the hand. I'm going to keep doing what God told me to do because I know I got to please him. Joseph had many coats of many colors. Uh, he got the coat of many colors and his brothers took it off, tatted it, threw it down, put blood 
on it. And now he's with the woman and the woman of God that's there in the house with him. It wants that tenderoni and he refuses us and he, he flees out of his coat. That's two coats he lost because he knew there was a decree on his life. You see, when you go further in the story and you go to chapter 41 verse 42, you understand that Joseph was put in prison. But later on, he get the opportunity to interpret the dreams, not of Potiphar, but the dreams of the Pharaoh himself. And he lets the Pharaoh know what all the mystics that was around the Pharaoh could not do. Joseph said, the spirit of God that's in me will interpret the dreams for you, oh dear Pharaoh. Uh, the dream means there will be seven years of, of lack and famine and seven years of plenty. Uh, he told him uh, everything he needed to know about his future. And if you go to chapter uh, 41 verse 42, the Bible says Pharaoh uh, confirmed the dream and he appointed Joseph over his whole house and the Bible says he put the ring from his hand on Joseph's hand authority and then it said it arrayed him in vestures or vestments you see they put another coat of many colors on him but this new coat was a coat unlike any coat his daddy gave him. Uh, you see, there was a third coat. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Uh, it was a third coat that was put on him of fine linen. And not only there, he put emceed hammer and to shame. He put a gold chain around his neck. Uh, and he told him to ride in the second chariot, which means that he would be Lord over all the land of Egypt. Uh, see the picture? Uh, there's the Father. The, the son is second in the middle uh, and the Holy Ghost. The three are one and have all equal power but the second position uh, was where Jesus was in. Uh, uh, Joseph is a picture of the son of God who would come. Don't you understand that Jesus had a coat of many colors colored by humanity and culture. Uh, colored by the multiracial lineage of some of which came from Joseph in the marriage of an Egyptian. Uh, but you see uh, they nailed him to a cross. They tore that coat and tattered it. They tore and nailed and splintered it. They tore and speared it. And they tore at that coat. Uh, they, they put him in a borrowed tomb after he hung his head and died. And hey, 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 on the third day, he got up with a new coat with all power in his hands. Uh, the glory of the Lord was upon him. The Bible says he ascended on high and sits at the right hand of the Father with new vestments on. Aren't you glad that God got a new coat for you? Uh, you ain't gonna have to wear this same coat uh, one day uh, uh, incorruptible or corruptible will put on incorruptible you get a pair of new shoes and a new coat uh, there'll be no more pain and no more crying uh, no more lying and no more dying uh, God's gonna do a new thing it's because Jesus Christ hung and died on Calvary's cross you can do anything stop worrying about the enemy and raise your game uh, you can endure temptation it will never stop but know that the power of God is in you. Use the power. Use the authority. You can do it now. Father, thank you. Everybody's standing. Father, thank you. We got to go. We got to go. I thank you, God, for your word. There's so much in here. I don't have enough to preach it, God. But I want the people to know as they go downstairs with First Lady and they go out and sign up for a small group, I want them to know who they are. You've been attacked, you've been beaten, you've been whipped, you've been tattered, you've been put in pits, you've been put in prisons. Yeah. God ain't finished with you yet. No, sir. No, sir. He wants you to know you come through addictions, you come through yes, mental sir. anguish, you came from through broken hearts. Yeah, yeah. You trusted some people who hurt you, you gave everything, but I want you to know you didn't give everything because God got more for you and he's going to put it all in you and through you and he's going to refresh you. Lord Jesus. <laughs> He's going to refresh every area of your life. You just got to stick close to him and stop trying to handle your business on your own. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that somebody hears this word and begin to flee from temptation and not tempt even God to free them from temptation. Stay out of some places. Don't go some places with some people. Stay out of certain contexts. Father, I pray that they would make up their mind because of you've been so good to them that they refuse to even put themselves in the very appearance of evil. God, use them and do a work in them.
in the mighty name of Jesus, your servant prays. Amen. Amen. Anybody in here? Listen to the song here. This word here, holiness. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. We invite you to Christ. If you don't have a church home, come right now. Yeah. If you never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, step out of your seats for a new begin. A new beginning is waiting you. Holiness. He'll help you to walk holiness in holiness. You can't is fight this battle by yourself. God for. needs you. He wants to use you. Holiness. He's got purpose and destiny on your life. But you got to choose this day who you will serve. Will it be God or will it be man? Holiness. Make up your mind. Holiness to live out his your faith in what him. you want for me. Come on, sing it one more time. Sing it for me. So take my heart, take my heart, and mold it. Take my mind, my mind, transform me. Is there one in here in the house? Come on, just do a pew check. Just ask everybody on there, have you accepted Jesus Christ? Do you have a church home? Do a pew check. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you have a church home? Just want to make sure you're safe and secure.